Okay, question 16. On the interval 2 to 5, is the curve y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5 increasing or decreasing? And then concave up or down. All right, if I'm talking about increasing or decreasing, I need to talk about the derivative. So the derivative of that function would be 3x squared minus 6x. I would need to find a critical number by setting that equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor out a 3x. If I do that, I'll get x minus 2. So my critical numbers will be 0 and 2. So if I do my y prime chart, I'm going to put 0 and 2 on it. And then if I plug uh, like negative 1 into the derivative, I'll get a positive answer. If I plug 1 into the derivative, I will get a negative answer. And if I plug like 3 in there, I will get a positive answer. So if, is it increasing or decreasing on the interval from 2 to 5? So from 2 to 5 would be over here somewhere. And so we see that the derivative is positive, so it is actually increasing. And when it says to justify, I could just say y prime is positive on that interval. So even this wasn't an interval that was on my chart, I can totally still pick which one it's on there. Okay, concave up or down, which means we need to get to the second derivative. So starting with the first derivative, the next derivative will be 6x minus 6. Set that equal to 0. So we'll factor out a 6. And so x will equal 1. So if I do my y double prime chart this time, put 1 on it. If I pick a number less than 1, I will get a negative answer. And if I put something bigger than 1 in it, I will get a positive answer. So if I'm looking for the interval from 2 to 5, that would be over on this side of the chart. So I know my second derivative is positive, which means my function must be concave up. And that is because y double prime is positive on the interval. And then we'd be done. Okay, problem 17. Find the limit as x approaches 5. First thing that we want to try to do is plug in 5. So if I plug in 5 here, I'm going to get 3 minus the square root of 9 over 5 minus 5. This would give me 3 minus 3, which would be 0, over 5 minus 5, which would also be 0. Um, that does not mean I can't find the limit. I just can't find it that way. So I notice that this is a square root. And so usually when we have square roots, we do something that's called multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply by 3 plus the square root of x plus 4 over 3 plus the square root of x plus 4. It's just the opposite of what's there. Okay, if I FOIL out the numerator, I am going to get 9. The insides and outsides drop out, and then minus the quantity x plus 4. Notice it's minus the entire quantity, so make sure you get that in parentheses. And then the numerator, remember, we do not want to do anything with. I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, now I'm going to carry that minus sign to both parts. So I'm going to end up getting 9 minus x minus 4 over that de denominator still. Okay, and then from there, this will end up giving me 5 minus x over x minus 5, and then 3 plus the square root of x plus 4. Okay, still really nothing happening, but I do notice that if I factor out a negative from the numerator, then I can cancel the x, these now become x minus 5's, so I'm good to go. So if I rewrite this, is actually just going to be negative 1 over 3 plus the square root of x plus 4. Okay, please remember the whole purpose of me doing this was so that I can plug in 5, so now I'm going to plug in 5 for the x. And if I do that, I end up getting negative 1 over 3 plus 3, so my answer will be negative 1 sixth. Okay, problem 18. Pictured above is the graph of f prime. For what, for what values of x is the graph of f concave up? Okay, concave up, or concavity in general, has to do with f double prime. If we are at f prime and I want to get to f double prime, I am going to look at the slopes. So if I look at the slopes of the curve, I am going to actually make myself an f double prime chart. So I notice the slopes of the curve are negative until I get to negative 4. So my f double prime will be negative, and then my slopes are positive all the way till I get to 0. And then my slopes are negative till I get to 3. And then after 3, well, no, kind of almost to 4, I think, actually. So I'm going to go all the way to 4, I think. And then after 4, my slopes turn positive again. All right, so if I'm looking at this chart, and I'm just trying to decide where is f 
concave up, I look at where my second derivatives are positive. So this graph is concave up from negative 4 to 0, and then again from 4 to, um, I guess I'm going to go to infinity because it doesn't really tell me or does it give me an interval. It kind of almost looks like it stops at 5, but I'm just going to, because I'm not sure how far this graph goes, I'm, I am going to go ahead and put from negative 4 to, in, from 4 to infinity. And that would be because f double prime is positive. Okay, question 19. If f of x and f prime of x has have values shown in the table above, and g of x equals f cubed of x, then g prime of 3 is equal to what? So this is telling me that g is equal to this function, so I need to take the derivative of this function somehow. This function really is the same thing as f of x raised to the third power. And since I have parentheses, I'm actually going to do a u substitution and call this u cubed. So if I'm taking the derivative of this, it would be 3u squared times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside, the derivative of f, will be f prime. Okay, so if I go to just write this again, 3u squared, 3 u again is f of x squared times f prime of x okay we know that x is 3 so g prime of 3 wherever i see an x i'm just putting a 3 right now times whoop, f prime of 3 okay then from here i'm going to get g prime of 3 is equal to 3 times f of 3 f of 3 is equal to 1. 1 squared is 1. And then times f prime of 3. f prime of 3 is equal to 2. So the derivative at 3 is equal to 6. All right, last problem. If y equals 5x minus 4 and over 4x minus 5, then dy dx equals. This is just asking me to find the derivative. And I do notice that I have a fraction, so I'm going to be using the quotient rule. My f prime will equal 5. My g prime will equal 4. So dy dx or y prime will equal f prime times g. So 5 times 4x minus 5 minus f times g prime. So 5x minus 4 times 4 all over g squared 4x minus 5 squared. Okay, I'm going to simplify the numerator here. I'm going to get 20x minus 25 minus 20x plus 16 all over the denominator squared 4x minus 5 squared. Okay, the x's are going to cancel out. I'm going to end up getting negative 9 over 4x minus 5 quantity squared, and that is my derivative. And we are all done.